psoriasis sufferers, chronic autoimmune condition causes, builds up scales, itchy skin, inflammation, redness, can get into the joints, can cause a lot of stiffness. It's super common. A lot of people run into it. So can I have patches? Now there are five types of it. Okay. Five types. And this was when I was kind of, you know, doing a little background so I can give you a really good solid remedy path here that I'm going to give you in just a moment. Seven things you can be doing, seven keys to controlling psoriasis and hopefully reversing it. But there's five different types. The plaque one is the most common. Okay. So this autoimmune based condition, it gets red inflamed patches that cover areas of your skin. And then these patches are commonly covered with like whitish scales. So that's what kind of gets kind of itchy and irritable. That's the most common one. Probably 80 plus percent of cases are going to be that one. Okay. Then there's the gut tape, small pink spots. We got the pustular, oof, white pus filled blisters, broad areas of the body, stomach, that kind of thing. They get red and flame the skin, not fun. Inverse is just bright red, shiny skin, okay? Inflamed skin, like the whole skin is, so they call that inverse psoriasis. And then there's erythrodermic, which is very rare. It's more like your skin gets sunburnt, but you know, few people do have it. So very common one. We're going to focus on more so the plaque side of it, but these steps would work for all of them. What do we do to get to the cause to start addressing why you might be in a position of psoriasis altogether? Here we go. Number one, what foods, what things that go into your mouth trigger that condition to get worse? When you study and look at the seven detoxification pathways of the body, you're going to find things like the lungs, the skin, the fat cells, the digestive tract, the liver, the kidneys, the fats. I mean, so when you break these down, if one or two of them are struggling, it's got to go to a backup mechanism the body does if it can. So what I see with skin related conditions so often is that if your gut is not properly functioning, it is leaky, it is having permeability issues and stuff that is, shouldn't be getting in is getting in and stuff that should be absorbed is not getting properly absorbed. Your microbiome is all off. You're not absorbing properly. Toxins are getting in. That shows up then in the bloodstream. The body's got to try to figure out how do I get rid of this? And it pushes it up through the skin. So oftentimes these skin related, if you are dealing with this plaque, these scales, you've got to take a good look at your gut. And the first place to start with your gut is what is triggering that thing to be healthy or unhealthy, but you can't always feel it. Can you? How's your gallbladder feel right now? How's your liver feel right now? You can't feel these things. So oftentimes you don't even know when they're in distress, but it's signs like skin issues or joint issues to say, I'm inflamed. What's driving this thing? Well, let's look at the gasoline for that fire. Gluten, very high on the list. Now you can be completely gluten free and eating incredibly unhealthy. I see it all the time. So gluten is not the whole story. What I find is when you eliminate and follow, for example, what we lay out in the Living Good Daily book, and you cut out the carbohydrates for a period of time, and you cut out those grains, breads, grains, crackers, tortilla chips, bread, you know, all those things that we eat up to way too much of, you eliminate the gluten. So I would rather you focus almost more there because the gluten's gonna go with it. It's not that you can't pay attention to just specific gluten foods, but when you go down the aisle and you start seeing gluten-free on top front of a label, that does not necessarily mean it's healthy. It's got one ingredient that might not irritate you, but chances are it could still have a bad oil. It could still have a different form of a carbohydrate or a sugar and still be unhealthy for you. So you gotta watch that gluten, okay? Nightshades, peppers, even tomatoes, the sauces of those can irritate it. So think, think your spicier, hotter foods, oftentimes they can cause irritation. So you may want to try backing off of nightshades for a period of time. Dairy, dairy can cause inflammation. Mucus makes chest congestion and respiratory issues worse. Make sure it's organic if you're going to eat it. So it gets cleaned up from the hormones and pesticides and things that end up in it. But I would avoid it altogether for a period of time if you do deal with psoriasis. Next is sugar. Of course, that's going to be pure gasoline, jet fuel for inflammation in the system. We've got to go periods of time. And I'm talking like you got to be very strict for a period of time to get that completely out of your diet to see how you do. And what pairs along with it is white flour, anything white based, all these crackers, breads, grains. I didn't say you can never have those things again, but for a period of time, we've got to get you off of that to see how your digestive system responds. So that's kind of step one, just to stop making the fire worse, right? All right, now, number two, there is a genetic component to this, 2%, 3%. I don't like playing that card. So I wanted to speak to it. So number two is not a solution necessarily, but an acknowledgement that even if it happened to be genetics, 
even if every condition on the planet can be improved if you improve your lifestyle. Every one of them. So you kind of can't play that card. I don't care what condition it is. Every condition that is even genetically caused, if you had a better lifestyle, you will at minimum not make that condition worse. Because if you combine a bad, genetic, bad genetics with a bad lifestyle, you're just playing with fire right there. But if you have a genetic condition, you have a great lifestyle, chances are you can control that condition a lot better or even minimize it or suppress it. That lifestyle is the loaded gun are the genes, okay? The lifestyle pulls the trigger. So you can turn bad genes on and you can emphasize bad genes with your lifestyle. So follow living a daily lifestyle that is designed to address all areas of your life from toxicity to what's in your house, to what's going on your plate, to how you're moving, to what's going on in your head. That's all there, all right? So that's number two. Number three, avoiding specific medications and specific jabs. Psoriasis, okay? Anything that is going to restrict blood flow, we're gonna have a problem for your joints, for your skin. So the issue with this, with a lot of these, is that they are causing restriction. They are ACE2 inhibitors. That is just like a blood pressure medication. And so a blood pressure drug or an ACE2 inhibitor found in one of these are going to go in the opposite direction of what we need to get proper blood flow and lower inflammation in the body. That's why a lot of people post inoculation are getting a lot of inflammation, a lot of soreness, a lot of fatigue. My joints are achy. That would be the opposite direction a person with psoriasis would wanna go. Is you're walking right into, you're adding gasoline to that fire. So I'd be very careful of blood pressure medications, anti-malaria drugs, hydroxychloro, that's gonna, that's gonna play right into the cards of making psoriasis worse. So I'd avoid those ones as much as you can. It's gonna tax the system. Number four, immunity's gotta go up. You can't be in a state of psoriasis with this autoimmune condition going on and have a tanked immunity at the same time. You're so vulnerable and it's gonna make these things work. A, a weak immune system is going to make psoriasis worse. So what are simple steps you can take for an immune system. Follow our guides, follow our master classes. The link is right there for you. Vitamin D, zinc, omega turmeric, three easy low hanging ones that you can grab, get into your system each day. Now, I would say that zinc has to be taken with quercetin. So then you need a vitamin C quercetin combo because zinc's gotta get into your cells. If it can get in there, it can really help bolster that immune defense, especially against viruses. Vitamin D, cross the board, it alone helps psoriasis. That comes with zinc, the one that we create, omega turmeric to lower inflammation. That's gonna help the immune response. We gotta strengthen immune, the immune system. Number five, sun exposure. Not too much, it's gotta be moderate. If you do overexpose yourself to sun and you get burnt, you're gonna make your psoriasis worse. However, research shows if you get a moderate amount of sun exposure, it's actually very good for that condition very good for that condition. So you can do that. And they, oftentimes with psoriasis, when you're having plaque and you're having scales, they'll put you through UV light therapy, whether it's a natural form or a synthetic form. So you could consider using and getting UV light therapy, red light therapy, you know, in the winter times, if it gets really bad for you, you could do find a quality tanning bed and use proper lighting. UVA and UVB both make a difference but I just like the good old sunlight if you can get it. Don't overdo it, but get yourself an exposure. A good rule is 20 minutes of 70 to 80% of exposure for your whole body is a good dose, okay? Not that you couldn't go an hour or two, but you start getting much more than that, you might be doing a little bit more harm than good. Number six, on a skin level, just, I get this question, what can I immediately put on it? I like shea butter, I like coconut oil, I like essential oils, I like chemical free lotions, you gotta find your jam that does the best. Shea butter, coconut oil, those are good options to be putting on there to try to just give you some relief from the irritation. Number seven, this is autoimmune based, which means we gotta go to the thing that controls 80% of the immune system, your gut. An advanced gut reset is required in this condition. That means spending 30 days flushing microbes and balancing out the gut microbiome, detoxing the system from chemicals and harmful agents in it, in the liver, in the, you know, all around the body, 
bolstering its defense against those toxins and then systematically going through a five-step process to reset the environment of your gut. If you just try to jump to just foods, if you just try to take a probiotic, if you just try to do this little detox thing, you're missing the whole picture in combination in sequential order is what builds that environment back up. That's found in the Living a Daily Lifestyle area. That's what I would highly recommend in this scenario. Psoriasis, it's not fun. I hope these things will help you get on the right track. You are the solution. And if you need help getting started, Grab the Living Good Daily book. We'll send you one for free. Just cover the shipping and we'll get building health.